Have you lost your sparkle? Feeling like the day to day is just so drab. Were you once a gifted child full of merriment and imagination, only to find your adult self lacking creativity and joy, caught up in the mundane tasks of everyday life? Have you realized Yuletide festivities have turned into nothing more than a bottomless void of corporate greed and mindless consumerism? If you've said yes to any of these things, then you need to try a childhood wonder. Now, new and improved with even more sparkle. Steel at $29.95. Did I design and assemble this entire fake vintage 50s product for the sake of the intro to this video? Of course it. enjoyed that weird little intro. I had the idea for it, so I just went with it. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about Christmas. So I have found in the last couple years that Christmas has just kind of lost its sense of magic, its sense of childlike wonder, and it's just kind of depressing. You know, being an adult is hard. I was thinking back to how magical Christmases were as a kid. I just wanted to get a little bit of that back. I've noticed that the whole holiday season has just kind of lost its sparkle, which is really sad to me, so I wanted to get that back. Um, a little background about me, if anyone cares at all. I grew up mostly atheist. <laughs> we celebrated Christmas, but it wasn't really at all in the sense of like religious holiday for us. Um, it was just like a happy time to, you know, make cookies and have Santa come visit and open presents and just be a family. That's pretty much what Christmas was to me and what I still celebrate it as today. And I know for some people, you know, Christmas is first and foremost religious holiday, which is fine, but for me it's not. <laughs> I think a lot of people also don't know that a lot of the typical Christmas celebrations that we celebrate have been taken from, you know, pagan cultures, Roman cultures, Norse myth and cultures like throughout history. I feel like I identify with that aspect of the Yuletide festivities rather than the strictly Jesus Christmas Christ stuff. <laughs> So yeah, I just wanted to, you know, try to recreate that childhood magic. Let's bake some cookies. We're gonna decorate. I do have the tree up already, but we're going to decorate a little bit. And if you're wondering, yes, I do have a, I think it's six feet tall tree in my tiny little apartment. So yes, um, yeah, that's happening. We're gonna put up some decorations. We're just gonna have it be a very cozy Christmas time. I'm hoping that you also kind of capture that Christmas magic as well. I think I would like to also go thrifting for a couple other little Christmassy items. I will show you some Christmas items that I also have. When I got dressed this morning, I was like, I'm gonna go for a Christmas theme, and I didn't realize that once I put all this on that I turned into Mrs. Claus. <laughs> but we're just gonna roll with it. I kinda like it. I'm an old lady at heart, so why not embrace it? I hope you come along with me on this magical little Christmas journey, okay? Let's go. I love thrifting for secondhand holiday decor because it always just has so much character and you know that it was once loved in someone else's home and now you're giving it love again. And you just find the weirdest and coolest stuff and it just is a lot more fun than buying, you know, cheaper mass produced kind of stuff. One super easy decor trick to kind of change up the seasons a little bit is to change up the books that I have on my shelf. And for the holiday season, I like to focus on reds and greens and Maybe some variations of greens, like dark forest and even like teal. And then of course those gold accents, which just make everything look so magical. In order to recreate the magic of childhood Christmases, you really have to lean into that nostalgia. So that means breaking out the old books that you used to read as a kid. So Harry Potter and Wind in the Willows and Little Women, all those cozy Christmassy books that just they really feel like a warm hug and they feel so familiar. They say that smell is a really powerful tool to trigger memories, so I like to light candles, especially pine scented candles. 
I mean, who doesn't like the smell of pine? Also, music is a really powerful tool as well. For me, it's always the Peanuts Christmas special music. That one, to me, is just pinnacle 90s childhood memories. And unfortunately, I cannot play you any of that music, so here is some royalty-free music instead. Oh, it's Christmas time I feel sad I can't help it One really easy and affordable way to bring a little bit of Christmas decor into your home is something my mom actually taught me. You can go to the dollar store or Michael's or whatever or just find some kind of Christmassy saucer and then a little mini wreath to go on top of it and then you just put a candle right inside the wreath and instantly it looks like this cute little centerpiece that realistically you just kind of throw together. If you want an environmentally conscious wrapping paper, I recommend finding some vintage wrapping paper like this one, or even the tube of the wrapping paper can be used as well. I think there's something so special about wrapping gifts for someone, putting that time and care into it, putting a bow on it, and I personally like to curl the ribbons as well. And it also helps if you have a little kitten to help you. <laughs> but wrapping presents is such a staple of my childhood. You know, you get home from the store and you say, don't look, don't look, I have your present. And then you go and I like to sit right next to the tree while I wrap my presents. My mom was always the best at wrapping, so I learned all my skills from her pretty much. And it was always just so fun to kind of scour under the tree to find the presents that she had wrapped and which ones are mine and my brothers and my dad. And There's nothing like that sense of mystery or anticipation of opening a new gift. I do want to mention too, I realize that not everybody has happy memories associated with the holiday season. And if you are alone this holiday, or maybe you're estranged from your family, or you don't get to see your family, you're not alone. You have me, and I really hope that this video reaches the people that it needs to reach. I understand that it makes the holiday season not so merry and bright. And if this season isn't so happy for you, maybe take this time to do some self-care, watch your favorite movies. My boyfriend abandoned me today and is going back to Wisconsin for Christmas. So next week, I'm gonna be here all by myself. Just kidding, I'm fine. But yeah, take some time to do some things around the house. Maybe reorganize something if you're a Virgo like me and that brings you joy. Clean out your cabinets, just do the projects that you've been putting off, or take a walk out in nature, listen to a podcast, do whatever you need to do to just try to enjoy yourself and enjoy the time as much as possible. And although being an adult means that you have to pay taxes, it also means that you're legally allowed to drink alcohol. So I recommend creating a festive signature cocktail. This one I called the Rum Pum Pum Punch. It has champagne, a little bit of pomegranate juice, and then is garnished with some sugared cranberries. And it was just fun, you know, embrace the season and make some cookies, make some cheesy bread. I'm looking through this uh, cookie book from 1971 and I just have to show you this recipe that I found. Potato chip cookies. Ingredients. One cup of shortening, one cup of sugar, one cup of brown sugar, two eggs, vanilla, flour, and one cup of crushed potato chips. Something different. These chewy cookies will be the talk of your next coffee party when you reveal what's in them. Sure will. <laughs> I decided that we are going to be making my favorite kind of dessert. It's something that my mom used to make all the time growing up, and I figured that this would be the absolute best nostalgic little treat. I have a very festive drink with me right here. It's called um, Orange Fanta. Oh, that's so good. So this recipe, we just called them almond bars. I don't know if there's another name for them, but they're really really easy to make essentially all they are is like butter and sugar i did have my mom text me a picture of the recipe i will put it right here if anyone wants to pause it and read it and i've never known anyone else that has ever made these before why did they change the butter did anyone notice this they changed the butter so these are the weird like condensed sticks like this is still a stick of butter smaller okay anyway 
So two sticks of butter. We need to do the butter and sugar first. I like to put it in the microwave for like five seconds. Don't tell Betty Crocker. You never want to put it in for too long because then you just get like nasty melted butter. I had to go to the grocery store today to get all this. I was sitting in my car about to get out and this woman, I saw her beelining for my car and I was like, that lady's, she's gonna approach me. I just know it. And she did. And I locked my door right away. She tapped on my window and was like asking for money. And I was like, sorry, I don't have cash. I really didn't have any cash on me. I go into the grocery store, get all my stuff. I come out, I'm going with my cart. Do, do, do. She approaches me again, the same lady, max half an hour later. Sorry, I don't have anything. I kid you not, I'm loading my things into my car. Not even 20 seconds have gone by. And she's approaching me again, asking me for money again. And I was like, you already asked me this. Like, two times this is the third time she's like oh oh i'm sorry and i was like okay clearly something's going on here oh <laughs> oh <gasps> oh that got all over the floor it's not what the christmas spirit is about oh, it's all over the counter now it looks like either magical snow or like a bunch of cocaine i've never done cocaine so don't don't, I don't actually know what that looks like. In college, walking to a New Year's Eve party, and I look in the snow and I see this, almost like a pouch, like a purse thing. And I was like, ooh, maybe that's a wallet. Maybe there's like money in it or something. Pick it up and inside is a little tiny plastic baggie with a bunch of white stuff in it. And I was like, <gasps> threw a little baggie back into the snow and was like, nope, I am not getting caught with that. Oh, my feet are all sugary now. That's got to be like an OnlyFans sub category, like sugared feet. Well, you know what? We're just going to put a little towel down for right now. Consult the recipe again. Electric mixer, beat butter and sugar until fluffy. And then you beat in the egg yolk. Fun fact, I actually thrifted this egg beater, I think in college. Separate the egg and the yolk. Now we just beat in the egg yolk with the sugar and the butter. Um, you're also gonna keep the egg whites, so just set those aside. And then we do almond extract, salt, and then eventually the flour. I'm just gonna use a little bit of my heart for this one. This is probably a super obscure memory that I have. But did anyone else eat the cherry dilly bars as a kid? Because that is what it smells like. You know how cherry and almond kind of like smell the same? They do. I'm not crazy. And then for salt, again, it's also salted butter, so I think I'm just going to do a little bit of that. Two cups of flour. My boyfriend gets mad at me because I use this one for non-liquid things, and he's like, it's a liquid measuring cup. I'm like, but it's the same, it's still a cup. You know, like the measurement is still the same. It's still a cup. If we cannot trust measuring cup sizes, we have nothing in this world. So my sound wasn't recording. So basically all you have to do is take your dough, you take a 13 inch cookie sheet, line it with tin foil, and then you just press the dough in as much as you can. Make it as even as possible, really get into those corners. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now that I'm actually recording this time, beat the egg whites until it has stiff peaks or until it looks like that, basically. And then, I made fun of my mother for this, but I got this for Christmas and I get to use it. So then you just brush on foam and this is just the egg whites. Wow, this actually works really well. <laughs> I've never had one of these like little spatula things. Don't worry, I'm gonna get this side. I know you were worried about it. So basically this egg white wash just makes it kind of like flaky and crispy on the top. I really hope somebody tries this. If someone does try this, please comment or message me on Instagram or something because this is probably like my favorite dessert of all time. I really hope someone else likes it as much as I do. Slivered almonds, these are just from the grocery store nothing fancy and then you just shake it all over the top it's super easy that's it we're gonna pop this in the oven and then i think it said 30 minutes or so we'll take it out and i'm gonna show you how good it is okay it's the moment of truth they came out perfectly golden it's time for a blast of nostalgia i mean you can't go wrong with just sugar and butter right mm. wow 
try this recipe. It's so easy. I think you're technically supposed to toast the almonds like in a pan before you put them on. I think I remember my mom used to do that. Honestly, it's really good regardless. So otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun little Christmas time with me. I hope you have a very safe and festive holiday season. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up so that I know to make more just like this. I hope you had fun today and I wish you a happy holidays. Bye!